Hello everyone, this is Monster and Boba coming at you with another Kid of Fates video. Today we're going to be looking at the community newsletter for June 3rd, 2022. First things first, we have the Combat Arena. We've started on a variety of new modes that will be featured in the Combat Arena. These include Versus AI, essentially the same as normal PvP, but one type being replaced by AI players like the Practice Arena, except with rounds and a more formal Versus setting. At this point, only sports one AI can vote per round, but we extend, expand it to a full team of four. That's really good. And then 2v2. They made a lot of headway on 2v2 combat for the beta. The basic functions are working pretty well, though there are still some issues to iron out. For example, the fourth player is currently memory intensive and has connection issues. After several bug fixes, peer-to-peer -peer is getting uh, pretty far along. We have a lot of testing left, especially when it comes to large distances between players, but we're hoping that this can make it into pub a public release for more rigorous testing in the near future. As a part of this, we made some improvements to the matchmaker on the account system. It now supports peer-to-peer -peer matchmaking and coordination, i.e. joining a friend's practice arena. It is also faster in general, especially with fewer players online. In testing, we saw roughly 50% or more reduction in queue times. Speed of loading into a match and speed of players connecting remain areas for future optimization. As a reminder, peer-to-peer -peer is something we feel must be used for single-player co-op experience. So while we're hopeful that it can be get it to the quality and responsiveness that it's ready for using it in combat arenas, either way it will be helpful to begin test for it for a single-player use case. We invested a lot of time into this, this sprint into changing how combat animations end when a new attack is immediately started so that the next animation can start before the animator returns to the idle state in testing. We found this really helps improve the flow of combat. Well, that should be nice. We fixed a few more bugs for you. Fixed a rare Lumala idol that previously turned them into a wool barrel. Fixed a bug where Kadoki and Salamurder ran about 30% faster when running diagonally. Salamurder now uses the sprinting animation for movement when the fear, uh, fear feed is active. That's pretty cool. Fixed issues with shield not taking damage from incoming attacks. Some attacks were erroneously showing two copies of the VFX and small issues with Thunderclap and Dive Bomb. On to some player now. NPC animations. Just doing some touch ups. We've completed work on smoothing out NPC motion like we showcased last month. Not only does this affect their starting and stopping, it also affects big changes in direction. We've added. The ability for NPCs to use our head look animator. No NPCs currently have this toggled, but we hope to add this in the future in several situations to breathe more life into them. We began work on breaking up the world's animation to smaller pieces that can be loaded slash unloaded as the player moves around the world. This will allow us to add several improvements to our nav mesh. Currently, we must load an entire world at once and break the nav mesh as one large graph. However, as the world grows in size, this becomes more cumbersome. Breaking the nav mesh into pieces allows us to load small chunks of the world and break the nav mesh into pieces that are eventually stitched together. This also means that we, as we update train, we can rebake the nav mesh for only the train that has changed instead of rebaking the single nav mesh for the entire world. Only streaming a a small chunk of the world's nav mesh the player moves around as opposed to loading the entire nav mesh graph also reduces the memory consumption of the graph and possibly opens it up to having multiple graphs loaded at once. This will come in handy as different NPCs of different sizes types may need to traverse the world in different ways utilizing nav mesh graphs with different data. We're looking to add some new tools to our training kit to help with populating the world, placing vegetation more quickly and effectively, and the swimming animations have been going in. Intensive testing found some interesting quirks. Here's an example with commentary for Andrew. Oh, so there's commentary with this one. <laughs> why, why does his face go away? Why does, why does his face go away? That's Koki just looking all all happy and then yep his face just disappears when he goes into water yeah i'd be upset too buddy <laughs> poor kadoki <laughs> but thanks for stopping by we'll see you next time on june 17th so there you guys have it this has been the community newsletter for june 3rd 2022 hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you all join me next time until then this is my awesome boba signing off hope you have a wonderful day goodbye god bless and see you next time bye bye